since we are after three o'clock uh, Seattle time, I feel that we can go ahead and get started. And um, as you all know, this is just a Q&A session for the upcoming conference in Detroit. We uh, Proposals are open until July 17th. And we wanted to just give an opportunity to answer any questions that you may have about uh, how to submit a proposal or the types of things that we're looking for or the conference in general. Now, some of these questions I may not have answers for because we are still in the development stage of the conference, but I'm here to answer whatever I can and make up an answer if I don't have a good one. So what are you all wondering about Detroit 2023? I was kind of wondering about some of the topics. Um, just in looking at the, um, the theme, wherever it went, it looked the like- community. Yeah. The co community collaboration and crossover. Exactly. So um, I guess I would love input to see if what I was thinking of potentially submitting, if there would, if you guys think there would be interest. I do a lot of work in schools, like K through 12. Um, and I'm on the roster of teaching artists for the Nebraska Arts Council here. So I have residencies in schools and I've done a lot of training for working with teachers in schools and as far as like lesson plans, writing lesson plans, meeting state standards, and then just various activities that I use to relate glass to the classroom. Um, I was thinking like maybe an interactive lecture type thing where I guess maybe it would be a LECMO, but the audience would have to participate because they would kind of be the class that I was working with just to show some of the activities that I use in schools um, and then just present some of the previous residencies that I've done and um, some of the lesson plans and how I relate glass to national art standards, I guess. I think that that's really interesting. I think my my thought would be that it might be more universally appealing if you tweaked it a little bit and focused it just on um, youth programming or not so much maybe need, meeting the state standards. Because I think one of the things that we've encountered a lot of is that people are trying to figure out ways to developing, develop programming to get youth involved. A lot of it's not happening in the schools, mm -hmm. so that's that standards isn't as I guess relevant to some people and could be a little daunting. But I think that there are tons of people interested in how to develop programming and how to engage the youth in glass programs. So I think the base of what you're talking about would be great. Okay, great. And I don't know if you, Carrie, were you in Tacoma? Uh huh. Okay, so you saw how many youth we had there this year. And that was like the first time for us to have that many kids. And we're working on a program uh, with, in, in as part of the conference, but at GAS, of how to continue to bring uh, kids from all over the country and eventually all over the world to the conference and support them in engaging with the community in that way so that we're hopefully giving them a platform from the age of whatever 15 on to really connect and grow through the community instead of waiting until they're 20 or so. So right, I think yeah. things like what you're talking about are going to become more and more relevant. Cool. And then how long, I haven't looked at the proposal too much, but how long should we expect um, a session to be? So lectures are an hour, legmos are an hour and a half. Okay. If you wanted to do a legmo and you felt like you only needed an hour, that would be okay. I mean, we right. we can 
we can plan according to that. Uh, so that would be something you would just let us know during the planning process. Okay. So as we're getting these proposals ready, if I were to write some ideas, is there somebody that's willing to look them over and make suggestions? Uh, I, I want to say yes, but the reality <laughs> is right now there are two of us, yeah, Lauren no. and me. <laughs> um, so uh, it's not something I can promise at this point. I will say that you can always shoot me an email if you have questions with like, is this relevant? And there, and I will tell you that when we're going through, you want to submit your best proposal po possible. Sorry, too many P's there. Mm -hmm. But if we like the core of a proposal, but we think it needs to be tweaked, we'll go back. We won't just say no. We'll say, hey, okay. Carrie, we liked your proposal, but would you consider doing it this way or adding this or whatnot? And then that gives you the opportunity to say, nope, I only want to do it this way. Or yeah, that could work. And we go from there. So it, it's not a black or white necessarily situation. Okay. And I see Lauren linked the proposal guidelines. Mm -hmm. so I'm just going to check that out. Um, is there a rubric of sorts to look at for doing the proposals? There is not. Um, because we really, we have about 25 to 30 folks that are scoring all of the proposals. Everybody on the gas board and then everyone on the site committee in Detroit will score it. So they all score based on a variety of different things. Some folks score from a, um, from a personal perspective. Then there are some folks that scored looking at the big picture and are trying to mentally curate the conference from the very first time they look at a proposal. What we found over the years is that that is a pretty good balance mm -hmm. of, of scoring and we get a pretty good average. And then we go into our planning meeting, which is the uh, executive committee of the board along with the site committee. And we go through all of the proposals and all of we have, and I don't have it in front of me, but everything that scores above an average score of X is automatically in. And then we start curating it to make sure that we have enough of the different types of working with glass are being represented that we have, that it's not just all hot glass or mm -hmm. that it's not all lectures about the history of glass. So that's when we start making sure that we're balancing folks and making sure we have enough international representation, uh, representation from different parts of the country, all of those sorts of things. So it actually, the rubric that would be nice if we had actually changes year to year. And okay. it also depends on what the theme is. Okay. Carrie, thanks for as asking all those questions. Those were really helpful for me. Yeah, absolutely. Just trying to um, see if there's anything else that I had, but yeah, your turn. <laughs> can I? Well, can, we can go back and forth. I don't. I. Uh, I, was, I have a question that sort of follows on Carrie's, which is, yeah, you know, as. as as I, I actually have three different ideas of things that I might propose that aren't that aren't really ready to, none of them are ready to present, but they would be by the time June rolls around. Mm -hmm. Is is that a is that a legal option? Like, do you guys care if we put three proposals forward? We do not. So, what you can on it. Oh. I can hear you. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can. I just touched something on my earbud that I shouldn't have touched and things started opening up on my computer. So sorry about that. Uh, yes, you can absolutely submit as many proposals as you want, uh, recognizing that they probably will not all get in uh, included. In fact, when people submit more than God, one, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> like, that would be a nightmare. Um, <laughs> We typically just look for one. Um, so that is, I, I won't say a risk, but if, if you have a preference, if you really want proposal A to get selected, just recognize going in that we may like proposal C better. Sure. Well, I think, I think, I mean, part of that has to do with, you know, that, that I think feeds into Carrie's question about, about rubric, right? I mean, yeah, I think there's a, you know, or, or whatever your criteria are and having the criteria be, I think it actually sounds pretty great to have uh, in some ways fairly arbitrary criteria, right, that are really geared toward what you need for this particular year. Um, and right, coming up with a way to write all those rules down and get them communicated to everybody in a way that we'd all understand probably would be pretty hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but you know, from from my perspective, you know, as, as I was talking with with Fumio earlier, uh, my my work is um, uh, I spend my days doing mm -hmm. helping write 3D modeling software in computers, and uh, my interest in glass is is in trying to find ways of using a combination of computer modeling, digital fabrication, and um, and and handcrafted glass. Mm -hmm in the process right and so my three offerings kind of are in different places one is in kind of an engineering side of how to make molds fairly complicated molds for mold blown glass uh, mm -hmm. there's form exploring form in three dimensions using software tools and then there's also just the practicality of making and blowing into molds uh, in a way that i haven't seen other people doing using the the sort of using materials that come from um from the from the like uh kiln casting world in mm -hmm. the hot shop so there's there's three kind of different entry points that i can come into and i don't actually know what your audience would find most interesting that's why i would put forward all those different ideas yeah well and i will tell you it's like i love everything that you just said for a couple of reasons one is because we don't have a whole historically we haven't had a whole lot of focus on those topics at the conference so this would be something that would be really new and different and interesting from that standpoint uh, the other reason is our partners ccs uh they have these amazing studios and facilities that we don't always have at other conference sites and they that they include a uh, a 3d studio a 3d printer studio they have a metal shop so they have all of these other interesting studios that we can play with and that's kind of one of the things that we were talking about when we were talking about collaboration from this perspective is that's a lot of what they do at CCS is that they work uh, interdisciplinary and that this you may hate this answer Ryan but that may actually <laughs> open up even more options to you because some of the things that we talked about were like what if somebody wanted to demo making a metal mold and then wanted to use it on another day so that's not mm -hmm. something that we've done before but it could technically be a two-day demo in two different studios that was a part no, a and a part b so I, i'm really excited about the potential that is there because we just don't normally have those sorts of toys to play with so yeah. i think some really cool stuff could come out of it Oh, so I could actually get myself hooked into having two demos if I do the right proposal, huh? You could. <laughs> um, you could. So there's there's some interesting stuff there. I mean, the, the 
I guess that sort of lends me, uh, well, let me chew on this and let other people ask questions mm -hmm. while I chew on this and then I'll ask you more questions. Absolutely. Thank Fumio, you. do yes. you have questions? Do you have <laughs> yeah. questions already? <laughs> yeah, um, actually Brian told already, so yeah. All I want to do is, uh, you know, introducing my method of, you know, of, uh, you know, connection between technology, computer technology and the uh, molten mm -hmm. glass, <laughs> for uh, burning glass. So, yeah, I was going to introduce my photo, photo images of that. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I just want to know, you know, any other possibilities. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that there are, so we, one thing we do are called LECMOs, mm -hmm. which could be an interesting option for you, which they are part lecture, part demonstration, but what they mm -hmm. real in reality are is taking an opportunity for a process that is too detailed or too slow mm -hmm. to show in over mm -hmm. the course of an hour and a half and mm -hmm. showing people it's kind of like a cooking show how if you've ever seen a cooking show they show you mix it together and then they put it in the oven and then they immediately take it out and it's done yeah, exactly so, and so that's the way like most really mm -hmm. are is people will bring examples and mm -hmm. show like how they develop something mm -hmm. and then the final outcome mm -hmm. so that could be an interesting option for you mm -hmm. if you wanted to do something a little more interactive than mm -hmm. just a lecture and showing the photos mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. And that oh. is what I, what I was <laughs> telling Perry that the legmos are an hour and a half long versus an hour for the lecture. So it gives you a little bit more time mm -hmm. too, if mm -hmm. you want to interact with the audience oh. or mm -hmm. create a oh. hands-on portion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, one more question about uh, submittable uh, your platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I wrote, yeah, actually I did uh, sub, submit my pro proposal already. And okay. uh, yeah, I wrote down my Dropbox address on it. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 You, so we, you most can link of it, the, huh? yeah. And let me actually just see if I can access it right now mm -hmm. and just tell you. Um, but we will just communicate through uh, with you through Submittable. So mm -hmm. we will respond through Submittable and you'll get an email that mm -hmm. says, um, I honestly, I can't remember if it says it's from Submittable or if it's from the Glass Art Society via mm -hmm. Submittable. But for me, I don't see yours. When did you oh, really? submit it? Mm-mm. I did it uh, this Sunday. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe it's not completed yet. <laughs> that may that may be the case. I would say go back in and check. You may okay. you may have missed a button to submit it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't look mm -hmm. like we've received it yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Perfect. Mm -hmm. And while it sounds like it might sound like there's a lot of overlap between what Fumio and I are doing, they're pretty different. Uh, there's there's a lot of difference in in almost all of our process, including the digital side of the process. So I'm I'm excited. I hope that if we both get to present, that I'll get to watch yours. <laughs> well, and I I think that is what is so exciting and it's fun to watch for us because you see this happening it's like all of a sudden there may not be anything about technology and molds and then all of a sudden you'll have three folks that want to do a demo or a lecture about it and they're all different but it becomes almost uh, like this mini focus, which is really, really cool. And it gets people excited because they get to see so much of it. And that really starts to make them think about what they could possibly do or how they could start integrating that into their practice. And 
and then I, I find that really exciting because then it starts people's other people's work starts to change and grow because of it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm cool. really excited to hear you both talk about using technology uh, in, in molds in this process. I would like to see both of them already. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back to thinking some more. I think Drew probably has okay. some questions. Yeah, hi Drew, I see you lurking over there. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Um, I got some questions. I, like, I how, love that hmm. graphic. <laughs> I think I made it. The, Did the you? Tray, yeah, I'm at the Russell and the uh, photo. Oh, right I recognize it. <laughs> and it <has> presence. <laughs> I love um, it. I was wondering, how can the flame working community be more involved? And specifically, what kind of demonstrations, panel discussions, or um, historical presentations would kind of fit the glass mold? I think a lot of us are like new to the idea of of presenting in this format. And I think it might mm -hmm. be a little uh, intimidating for some folks. Intimidating. I mean, I, yeah, I've, I've reached out to a ton of people in the last couple of days. And uh, it's gotten a, a, a positive uh, feedback. But I, I don't think people exactly know how the show goes and what it would look like for them to participate. Sure. Well, I think a couple of things. I, I would love to see a panel come in and talk about the flame working community because I think a lot and I know Drew you and I have talked a little bit about this in the past it's that it's almost demystifying the the flame working community for the other folks or the pipe community for the other folks in the glass community and the way they work and I think a panel discussion could be really enlightening for a lot of people to see uh just how you all work and approach the community aspect, especially since that is one of the things that we're focusing on on Detroit. And I mm -hmm. think that's one of the things that makes Detroit so great is how you you all do work together to elevate the entire community there. Mm -hmm. uh, the demos are an hour and a half long. Mm -hmm. And I think, so for folks, and we've done a couple of different things. I know you you know about the um, the International Year of Glass collab that we did this year, and so that's one thing. If people wanted to do a collaboration, that would be one way to work within that. But I think there are so many interesting techniques that the flame working community employ that we don't always see. That I would say focus on those specialty techniques would be a really interesting thing it, mm -hmm. is is that too vague for you no no i can understand what you're talking about like maybe some of the grow work or print work or um even some of like uh, the italian like uh styles montage like things that we've all robbed from modern glass making <laughs> i could <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to uh, the proposal I'd like to throw out there is just a panel discussion of uh, a blade from the Colorado Project. Myself, Alston Key, and Jeremy Ross doing a Q and A, um, just about the documentary that we put out and and talking right. and talking to like how we take um, like our our artistic talents and turn it into tangible social change. And I think that's that's something that I, if we if I can talk Alston into taking out. An hour and a half or whatever an hour for a lecture to do this like right before the show it, it might be really really cool um i and, think that would be other, great should i submit a proposal for the uh the documentary to be shown or should we uh is there a possibility that we can show it at the dft during gas or you know um the dft is a detroit film theater at the dia um okay yeah, I, I would like for you to submit a proposal. Um, I think that that might, uh, we do want to partner with the DIA. So it's great to know that they have that there. But if you submit mm -hmm. a proposal, then we at least have it on our radar when we're going through the planning meeting process. And we can think, oh, so there's this film. We can do it at DIA and just put that aside. And it can be very, uh, just I'm sure you have a blurb about the film, so you could just plop that blurb in there and make it pretty straightforward. But I would like it just for a placeholder. 
Okay, and is there any um, formal proposal, like submission outline, or like any kind of like structure to it that you like followed? Like, is there like a, some sort of American literature standard form for writing artistic proposals? <laughs> no, but there is, and I'm Lauren put in, and you, I don't think we're here, so you, I'm going to just relink it. Oh, did you just do it for me, Lauren? You did. Okay. So in the chat, Drew, are you on, can you see us? Are you on a computer? Or are you on your phone? Yeah, I can see you guys. Okay. So Lauren just linked in the chat box, a link to the conference proposal guidelines, which will, I think, answer the question that you're asking. And because it walks you through, you will go through submittable to submit the proposal and the guidelines just kind of walks you through how to do that. My experience, Drew, in looking at this, I found, and I think this might actually very answer Carrie's question about the rubric, was that if you actually go to Submittable and create an account and start the application process, it has a bunch of form. It's a form with like many, many, many lines of stuff to fill in. And, and so that, that, it wasn't until I saw the Submittable form that I kind of got an idea of how you, how GAS wanted mm. their stuff submitted. The, the proposal guideline was still too abstract for me, but the actual submittable form, I think, makes it clearer what those questions are. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's actually really good to know, Brian. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah, I went through and, uh, you know, and, and, and filled out a submission. and I didn't send it. It's still up in, in my browser, but I'll definitely go okay. back and, and send that over. Yeah, and you can, I, I don't know if you were here when we were talking, and you're gone. <laughs> oh, well, he'll be back. So Brandy, I'm curious in this. Oh, Josh is here. Let, let Josh. Josh, do you want to jump in or do you want to just listen for a bit? Hey. Hey there. How's it going, everybody? Um, I might listen for just a bit to catch up. I'm sorry I hadn't been able to catch the first half, but I'm really that's excited okay. to learn more. Yeah, that's okay. Well, then, Brian, go ahead. Thank so you. this this idea that you had talked about, about having like a, a part A and a part B on two different days, which would be sort of like a, a big version of the, I think people like to call this the Julia Child demo, right? Where the cooking show demo where it's like, you whip up something, you stick it in the oven, like you said, and then you pull out the cooked result. Mm -hmm. um, there'd be a couple stages of that. Do you want me to just mention that in the proposal? Is this a concept that all the other people who are going to be reviewing these proposals are going to have an idea about? Or how do you want me to like link the two together to make them look like they could be a part A and a part B, but could also be done completely separately? That is a good question and i would say submit them as two separate proposals and in your description i would say could be paired with proposal b or could act as a standalone demo and i would say that in both of them uh okay. we haven't we haven't actually in my time at gas we haven't done one like this we did we were going to do one for the virtual conference a couple years ago that was a, a cameo engraving they were actually going to blow the piece one day and then cameo engrave it the next day and it just ended up being too challenging for the virtual aspect of that conference uh, but that was going to be our first time doing it so most of the folks are familiar with the idea that these are going to be two separate things, but they go hand in hand. But I still think if you just include that one line linking them together, that will remind them that that is a thing that can be done. Goes great with Chardonnay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, I think You're that, welcome. Um, Wow, that sort of expands my concept of how I might submit this, but I, I appreciate that, and I'll um, I'll see what I can pull together. 
Well, that's why I said you might hate me for saying it, but. <laughs> no, I mean, it's actually quite interesting because it would take people through a couple of different stages in the process. I mean, I would hope that that Fumio would do the same thing because I think his is very, very much, uh, uh, you know, he's got a hot shop component and he's got a, and he's got a digital component that really, you, you can't really do them in the same space. You know, like when, um, mm -hmm. uh, Brent, I, I don't know, this year at Gas, uh, Brandon Callahan and Pirax Suan did their presentation. And if they had any more computer stuff in there, you wouldn't be able to see it on the screen. It's too far away. It's too loud. Yeah. Um, you know, so splitting it into two different venues would make sense. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm really excited about the idea because then it really truly allows you time to focus on each aspect. Because honestly, when you're talking about doing both of those things, an hour and a half really isn't that long. No. So. <laughs> okay. So I think that that's, that's definitely the advantage of this. Cool. Well, I, I think I got my questions answered and several more created. So I'm going to go <laughs> silent here and let everybody else jump in. Thank you. Absolutely. So Carrie or Fumio, do you have any anything else? If not, Josh, you're in the hot seat. I can't think of anything right now. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, Josh, <laughs> what questions do you have? All right, so I am in the hot seat here. Um, it's good to be with everybody here. Um, I actually just found out this morning while I was uh, doing some Lamborghini broadcasting about this event and application process and, and all of that. So I don't want to necessarily come in and just sort of ask for the most basic question, questions, but based on what Brian had said and a little bit of information that I've been able to gather just this afternoon. Um, I myself like work on like networked mm -hmm. pieces, uh, sort of lattice work. Um, and so a demonstration in person really would be um, something that would be like not not too difficult to to like do there. But I spend weeks and weeks on pieces. So it would be like finishing something up. And then also the option of talking about lamp working, floral silicate, and pipe making from the perspective of someone who's coming from that background primarily yep. and trying to just navigate the art scene and the market and just sort of in general the craft and medium outside of just like the bubble that I've kind of come from that you want to like be able to kind of grow out of and also kind of have it itself expand into other places and cross pollinate with other particularly lamp workers and glass blowers glass artists and uh, yeah. the entire world of glass art which is much bigger than over. so but as far as questions uh i have uh, you know infinite and i feel like i know there's another meeting and so I, I feel I might be attending the rest of this meeting and hoping to prepare um, some just better prepare questions uh, after I've had time to kind of take in more of the information that's already available, already available sure. and not being too redundant uh, for folks who've already kind of done the due diligence of covering those bases, uh, which are like yeah. readily available, you know. So um, I don't want to take up anyone's time with, uh, you know, information that's public um, but just generally, I suppose, um, yeah, I have too many questions. I don't even want to get down, down that road, I guess. I don't want to, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do my reading this evening and over the next few days and, and start preparing. And then uh, come our next meeting, I'll, I'll have some real questions uh, that hopefully will be more, a better contribution than sort of the basics. Here. Well, it, and you can always send us emails as well if you have questions as you're as you're working through stuff because I know that everybody's 
just process and proposals are all different. So everybody has a variety of questions that come up at different stages. So don't don't hesitate to reach out if you think even after, because our, our next uh, Q&A session is next week on the 6th, but then you still have 10 days after that until the proposals 17th. are due. Yeah. Yeah. So. So if, if it's past that second Q&A session and questions come to any of you, don't hesitate to like just shoot us an email because we want we want you all to feel good and comfortable about what you're proposing. Um, and we, we definitely don't want you to not submit a proposal because you had questions that you didn't have the answers to. So. Awesome. Thank you. And Josh, and we already all got you, our Josh? questions answered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you got time. <laughs> where are you, Josh? Oh, well, I'm in Lawrence, Kansas. So uh, a little ways south. Uh, you know, not too far, though. Uh, yeah. Lately, I have been working myself on broadcasting my process. Um, and so I'd actually be happy real quickly to show you a few of the cameras that I use that uh, would be like, or the setup that I have, I could show in just a minute, which would actually kind of be something I would maybe want to incorporate in some way into whatever yeah. my proposal is. Um, if I can, you know, technically figure out how to switch my camera here. Okay. <laughs> so this is my um, open broadcast software. And I have these overhead cameras. This little foot pedal here. Here is my above camera, these lights. What I will do wow. is use this foot pedal to change the view, uh, change the camera view. And I can uh, zoom in and all of that. I have a little tank jar camera. And my film camera. And uh, what I'm working on here, the little network, little network uh, Nintendo character, because I broadcast a lot of uh, my class work on Twitch, which is kind of a video game platform. So I yep. am outspoken against the. I really have a strong distaste for intellectual pro intellectual property and it's uh you know the problems it causes for creators and i want to be able to share uh, my process and what i'm doing with as many people as possible because one of the things i find most fascinating about not just pipe making but lamp working in general is that with a very you know modest um, set up, you know, just a small torch, you can, you can be making crafts yourself or with a few peers. And it is really a great entry point for people into craft or art or their way to begin a path into like learning how to work with a medium and just, you know, have a small amount, a minimum, minimal amount of autonomy yeah. in their work and uh, just a little bit of personal freedom to be able to express themselves. It's something that any way that I can, I want to share and be just be a part of any solution that I can. And so um, I was real lucky to have Drew Cups come into my broadcast this morning and tell me about this and everything that's going on. And I'm really excited to just continue yeah. to like learn about it and meet people who are also going to be a part of it because uh, I think regardless of uh, you know whether or not I'm able to do any proposal, I think whoever is going to be around and whatever will be going on at this event it's going to be something that you know i want to, i want to be there for it's a really exciting time yeah. to be a lamp worker and to just you know the potential that we have right now um there's a lot of momentum there's a lot of people that are yeah. learning about this and the craft is really progressing and it's just an exciting time i can't really think of a better time to be a lamp worker it's a really exciting time to be I agree with you, and I, I asked where you were because I wondered if you were one of, of the folks that Drew brought along because I knew he had said he had been reaching out to people, and uh, you know he he and I 
because he is part of the Michigan Glass Project, which is going to be one of our partners on this this conference. And so he and I have been talking a lot about this conference and what it's going to look like. And I think that it is going to have such a huge contingency of lamp workers at this conference. And that's very exciting to me. And I think that everything that you've just said, Drew and I've talked about, about how can we uh, just really show the access points to folks that are interested or young artists and how can we start to talk about that crossover from land working pipe making into the art world and break down some of those the stigmas and the barriers that have existed for so long so i'm really excited about this conference from that aspect as well yeah it's uh, yeah a wonderful time uh because it does seem like there's bridges are being built and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just want to be a part of a part of that in any way possible, you know, just to facilitate that. Yeah. You know, whoever is there to hopefully learn. Well, it's gonna happen in Detroit. <laughs> yeah, it's Detroit's where it's at. It seems I'm really excited. I'm really excited. After talking to Drew, he's um, you know quite the evangelist for it, and yeah. I'm yeah happy that he's he's out there doing it. It's really good work. Yeah. Well, you just missed him. He was here, and then we lost yeah, him. Yeah, I saw his name for just a moment or two, <laughs> but uh, I, I chatted with him a, briefly, just, uh, you know, briefly earlier today, and, uh, you know, I'll definitely be, because, you know, bless you, bless you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, you know, I'll definitely be continuing to talk to him. I'll probably be asking for a little bit of his advice from, you know, yeah. the preceding part of the meeting, and he is well-versed in uh, the planning of the events and all of that, so... Absolutely. It's really nice to be with y'all, Brian. Fumio, Perry, Randy, um, Lauren. Uh, hello, everybody. I don't. I don't feel like I. I'm. I apologize for my. my uh, for my tardiness, but uh, I was glad to be able to oh. be here for whatever I could. Thanks for no the need. demo of your your setup. It's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's a really impressive Thanks. setup. Yeah, I'm, you know, Thanks. I'm working on it. It's, uh, you know, I'm definitely, there's a learning curve. There's lots to learn. And uh, a lot of it for me actually is like, uh, I've always struggled making content and filming what I'm doing. It's actually like really uh, seems to be like the way to reach people. And so a friend of mine who works in tech has said, oh, you should live stream. And very was very resistant to the idea first. But what's nice is that I have footage of most of what I'm making now. And I can take that and quickly turn it into short format content, like a minute. I'll chop it up. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with the Chocolatier Amari uh, on Netflix. He has a special, but he really popped off on social media with these little videos of him making chocolate sculptures that have one second cuts. It's like one second, one second. And it's just a really great way to illustrate the process in any craft or anything that you make. And so I want to be able to hopefully cut that content from what I'm doing here. That's the same sort of thing. So that's kind of why I've got it set up. And, uh, you know, I'm still figuring it all out. It's really, everything's an iceberg, you know, but uh, it's exciting. And the tools that are out there for people to be creative with are free and accessible now in ways they never have been before. And I think that it allows people from all different backgrounds a little bit more freedom, a little bit more creative, uh, you know, capability without as much of a high bar for entry, you know, just financially. So it's like, hopefully people can, uh, you know, this is all like a somewhat little fancy setup, but uh, ultimately like you can broadcast from your phone and you can begin lamp working, you know, with a very relatively modest budget of like glass art and starting in fact. I mean, it is more attainable than most other ways I can think of getting into it. And, you know, I don't have that much experience in other realms of, uh, you know, but the hot shot and things like that is, you know, sometimes it, it takes a good, you have to be um, in a place where that is in order for that to be something that you can access. And there are lamp workers and pipe makers all over the country. Um, some studios, a little more 
um, accommodating than others, you know? So uh, the Twitch channel, oh, thank you so much for saying so, uh, Carrie, actually. The Twitch channel is actually Agitpipe, it's A-G-I-T. VIP, and it's no longer this uh, not a pipe show as there is a glass artist who I've kind of become friends with uh, on Instagram and his handle is not a pipe maker and I just uh, kind of oh well I don't really want to uh, you know he's been rolling with that for a while and I, I didn't want to uh, impede on his uh, you know, sort of just just namesake and that although like most art it is uh, you know derivative from Matisse uh, from the, of course, infamous uh, This Is Not a Pipe painting, which uh, we all, you know, in the lamp working world are all too familiar with. Um, but uh, for me, Agit Pipe is just generally about, you know, the there are so many, so many problems <laughs> collectively beyond just like, uh, you know, the cannabis uh, legislation. And it's like a like microcosm of our systematic issues that we all are dealing with like regularly. And so it's a way for me to try and, in my mind, reach people who may not actually, uh, you know, think about things outside of the bubble of glass pipes and try and kind of bridge the gap and be like, hey, look, you know, it's cool and all, but like there's a lot more to be said. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to glass than just just what we've done so far. And we're like, just, you know, for pipe makers, at least I feel like there is this big momentum and movement, a lot of people in the craft, and there's just a lot that hasn't been fully fleshed out and and done yet. There's so much left to discover, I, you know. Um, there's just so many other mediums where it's been going on for a long time. And here, I feel like there's so many un, unturned stones. There's a lot left to, you know, a lot. I mean, I have a lot of questions left. I have a lot left to learn. And that's like kind of my favorite thing in general about craft is that you're, you're never really going to figure it all out. The best you can do is kind of like find uh, something that you um, enjoy and try and do your best. I don't know. So, yeah, keep learning about the process. It's nice to also, I spent a lot of time during the pandemic in isolation here in my studio. So forgive my uh, <laughs> bit rambly when I get around folks too. Now I'm like, I get myself just carrying on into uh, like tangents or rambling, uh, not knowing where I'm going, taking uh, you know, the conversation. But uh, yeah, I feel real lucky to have the community of artists and the infrastructure of other people out there uh, and our shared, shared experience. Yeah, we're all we've got, you know what I mean? So, which is nice to do. So. Well, you know, and I think you're right. I think I've always said I think glass attracts forever learners. I, th I think that those are the folks that are attracted to glass. They're the people that always like to keep learning and are always trying to push themselves and figure out something new and different. And I see that across all ways of working with glass. That's not solely glass blowers or lamp workers or fusers. It is something that all or most glass artists, no matter how they work with glass, have in common. And I think that's a really special thing that our community shares. Yeah. Yeah, see, I need to get outside of my bubble. I've come from glass pipes and am completely, I feel, I find myself uh, unaware of the bigger world beyond. And I very much enjoy. Yeah, there's something actually quite comforting about knowing that there's so many others. You know, that have well, been doing this. Well, a gas conference sounds like it is the perfect place for you then. Yeah, no, I've got to be there. I've been talking to her about. I've got to go. I've got to just like go see everyone's work and meet everyone and kind of become aware of what's going on around me. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Well, that's what I was saying to Brian and to Fumio. It's that they have similar. They they do similar things, but they're so different. And I love that seeing that come together at conferences because all of a sudden you just see that starting to impact other people's works because people are learning from each other 
and that is starting to just influence the way that they move forward with their practice. And I think that is one of the things that is so special about the conference because you're bringing together a, a ton of people that love glass, but all look at glass from a very specific perspective. And when they start sharing those perspectives with each other, it starts to change other people's perceptions. And it's just a really, really interesting and beautiful thing to watch happen. So Detroit, Josh. Detroit. I'm there. I'm there. I'm excited. Hopefully get the opportunity to meet you all. And yeah, that's, that's where it's at. Yeah, the collaborative Perfect. nature. I'm oh, sorry. The collaborative yeah. nature of glass and like the glass pipe scene too. I feel like uh, that, that, that I say that because it's all I can speak to because it's where most of my experience is, but I feel is one of the like things propelling it forward it is the the cross pollination of information and the sharing openly of ideas and information between people um that's just something that like outside of glass even myself i consider like the sharing of ideas and technology to be fundamental it is like foundational uh i just i'm someone i don't believe really very much in intellectual property i've always telling people, uh, you know, go ahead and make whatever I'm making. There's no stepping on my toes. Uh, because people, everyone shared with me the means, yeah. uh, you know, techniques. And I think just being open and sharing is really like our future in, in terms of like every craft. If you look at YouTube, if you look at all these different platforms, it's, it's who's out there sharing the information and being the source. Um, Bob Snodgrass is even like, you found fuming in the color changing pipe and the first thing he says is like i'm going to share it with every glass blower i know i'm going to share this and not yeah. just kind of keep it to myself in my you know share it spread it and just that's the best uh but anyway i'm again uh holding my phone or, you know holding on to the microphone here too tightly uh but yeah the collaboration aspect, aspect of glass is and in this past few years i've not done very much of that as i've been kind of isolation and it's something I've grown to really appreciate and value yeah. and uh, value like the peers and the people I work with, collectors, curators, artists. Uh, I value like every person that I get the opportunity to, to be around and work with because I know we're kind of all doing that same thing regardless of your medium. So anyway, yeah. sorry to just I feel like I came in here. Hey, I need to, to um, I need to jump out. I need to jump out of here. So I'm going to say thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Josh. Lauren, that's Fumio. okay. Nice to meet you. We nice are bumping up on our hour. It, does anyone have any final questions before we we say good night or good afternoon, depending on where you are, <laughs> or even good morning for you, Fumio? Right? Isn't it morning? Oh, uh, it's morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Excellent. Well, if, if you all have more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us or we are doing this again next Wednesday. Is that right? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Next Wednesday. Um, but yeah, as you get through the process, as you as you work through submittable, if you have questions, just email us and, and we're happy to help. Great. Thanks for your help and time yeah. and questions and whatnot. Absolutely. Well, I cannot wait to see all of your proposals. Thank you, Brandy. So, awesome. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good Bye, day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. You too.